Silas and the Lizard, and Milo's funny fright. By Elizabeth Thisk, Silas and the Lizard. Silas was eating his dinner one night when he suddenly stopped. Look, Mum, there is a green lizard on the window. If you sit very still and don't make noise, you may see it eat the small bug that is in front of him, his mum said. Silas froze in his seat and stared at the two creatures on the window. The lizard slowly started to move back and forth and from side to side, one foot at a time, stopping to make sure the bug had not seen it. Then it would move another foot and stop again. Suddenly, without warning, the little bug was not on the window and the green lizard was gulping his food. Silas squealed excitedly. <laughs> Why did you see that, Mum? It was great! The five minutes it took to watch was the longest he had ever sat still. Myla's Funny Fright Myla's eyes opened. She knew her mummy had gone to find dinner. She wanted to explore the outside of her treehouse. Slowly, she climbed the inside of her home to the round opening. Crawling onto the branch, Myla stopped to search for danger as her mummy had told her to do. Stretching her neck, Myler turned her head to both sides and up, then down. She perched on the branch to listen for any noises. Finally, Myla inched forward. The chilly night breeze felt like fingers through her hair. Something moved out of the corner of Myla's eye. Turning her head slowly, she searched the nearby trees. A few trees away, Myla saw a large brown shape turning around. It looked like what her mummy had told her an owl would look. Milo was scared. She knew owls were dangerous. Milo crawled slowly and backed into the opening of their treehouse home until only her tiny head was showing. Suddenly she heard a noise in the leaves at the bottom of her tree. Milo inched to the opening again and looked down. Mommy, hurry! There's a big bird close by. Myla's mommy raced up the tree trunk, then stopped near Myla. Her mother swung her head around until she saw the big brown bird. <laughs> then she started laughing. <laughs> Go back inside, and I will tell you about that bird. After Myla had eaten, she curled up to listen to the story. Her mother explained, The owl is fake. The humans hung it there to scare birds away from the garden. I am proud of you for listening to my warnings. If it had been a real owl, it might have attacked you. Myler nuzzled against her mother. Glad she was proud of her. The Happy Little Bear Goes to the Farm by Amy Land Illustrated by Catherine Howe Read by Kaz Duffy The Happy Little Bear was going to the farm. It was Wednesday. 
He was going to his friend Farmer Tom's house for the day. He got up and had breakfast with his mummy and daddy. Then he washed up and put on his overalls. There are lots of things to see and do on a farm. He saw his favourite animal, the cow. The cow says, moo, moo. He got to milk the cow. Cows eat hay and grass. The happy little bear got to feed them. He saw a mama sheep and her two babies. They say, ba, ba. He also got to feed the sheep. They eat hay too. He saw some geese. They say, honk, honk. He got to feed them. They eat seeds and swim in a pond. He saw some pigs. They say, oink, oink. They eat garbage. They also roll around in mud. Farmer Tom has a red tractor that goes brum, brum. Farmer Tom uses the tractor to do all of his work. The tractor moves the big bale of hay to feed his horses and deer. The happy little bear gathered the eggs from the chickens. Farmer Tom has a busy day taking care of the farm. The happy little bear got to help for a day. At the end of the day, he was very, very tired. He was ready to go home and go to sleep. The end. <laughs> Yummy Me, Feel So Good by Lion I Am, read by Ashtray. Who am I? It's hard to say. There are so many me's in just one day. <laughs> am I a loving me? Who am I? It's hard to say. There are so many me's in just one day. Happy fuzzy me. Mm. Am I a grumpy me? Sad me. Who am I? It's hard to say. There are so many me's in just one day. Sometimes I'm a real mean me. Be careful when you see that me. Ah! 
Mmm, good. Sometimes I'm a super hungry me. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a very, very angry me. Ah! Ah! Oh my, it's hard to say. There's so many me's in just one day. It feels really yummy to just be me. Yummy me, yummy me. Me, 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 me. Yummy me. Yummy me. It feels so good being yummy me. That's most of my fun me. Yummy me feels so good. I love yummy me. My, there are so many me's, and the real one is none of these. They're passing me's, just passing me's. I watch them come and go, just like a show. Underneath it all, I'm relaxed as yummy me. Underneath the tree lies Lion I Am Me, the king of all the passing me's. Not much bothers Lion I Am Me. He relaxes in his yummy place watching all the passing me's. All these feelings come and go, but Lion I Am stays on to watch the show. He loves himself the way he is. That's what Lion I Am knows. <laughs> Quiet feel good me just relaxes and watches it all just pass on by. <laughs> Yay me! Me, me, me. I love me and all my me's. Whoopee! Love is everything. Love makes the world spin. I love everybody and me. You have been watching Yummy Me, Feel So Good by Lion I Am, read by SJ. Hello kids, it's Raymond, here to tell you a lovely story. It's called Jonathan's Biggest Bonkers Birthday by Tracy McBain. Jonathan is always late. Once, right after breakfast, he thought he'd treat himself to some tasty carrot cake for lunch. By the time he arrived at the cafe though, it had closed for the day. Jonathan is also very forgetful. This week, he's already lost his glasses, his favourite bendy pencil with the fancy rubber on the end, and a tasty picnic of crunchy lettuce leaves and beetroot. Today is a big day, but he can't quite remember why. Luckily for Jonathan, he has received a note with some details. It was posted through his letterbox this morning. Opening the carefully folded piece of paper, he reads, Village Green, 2 p.m., don't be late. He turns it over to check for a signature, but the other side of the paper is blank. How curious, he thinks. Jonathan reaches for his favourite notebook. This is where he jots down little reminders for himself. Don't forget to go to school today. Seems to come up a lot. That's because he is chief storyteller at the village school and visits every week to tell his latest tales to the children. 
he glues the mysterious message next to a story he has just written called The Thoroughly Naughty Viking. As it's such a big day, Jonathan wants to make sure he reaches the village green by 2 p.m. and decides to catch the bus instead of walking. I can't take any chances, not today. After all, the note said not to be late, he says. The sun is shining and it's very warm. On the way to the bus stop, Jonathan passes a park, and coming through the trees, he hears a familiar tinkling tune. That can only mean one thing, an ice cream van. Jonathan loves ice cream. I won't be too late if I stop off for a cone, he says. As he reaches the van, the ice cream seller, a very nice man with a very nice moustache, leans out of the window. A strawberry cone, please, asks Jonathan. Oh, I'm so terribly sorry. We're closed. I have a birthday party to get to, replies the ice cream seller. And with that, he closes the window and drives off quickly along a higgledy-biggledy track. Another time then, smiles Jonathan, waving at the back of the van. As he begins to walk back to the main road, the number 23 bus is clattering along. It says... Village Green on the front. I can make it if I run, Jonathan exclaims. He does not make it. Now, the good thing about buses is that if you wait long enough, another one eventually comes along. Jonathan is very good at waiting. A bus finally arrives. As he climbs aboard, he notices it is almost full. Where's everyone going, he wonders. As he moves closer to the driver, he begins to look for his bus pass, frantically patting his shell until he remembers he has left it behind. I'd lose my house if I didn't carry it around with me, Jonathan jokes to the driver. Don't worry, you can't be expected to remember everything on such a big day, she replies. Oh yes, the big day! He'd forgotten about that. How did the driver know about it, Jonathan wonders. Before he can ask her, a voice drifts down towards the front of the bus. I do hope there won't be too many candles this time. Last year my washing was ruined. Smoke and flames and I don't know what. I needed a nice cup of tea and a lie down after it all. The voice complains loudly to no one in particular. It's his neighbor, Mrs. Goggins. Jonathan sits down next to her and nods politely. Good day, he says. Mrs. Goggins appears surprised to see Jonathan. Hello, she replies. Um, are you looking forward to... Clang! Toot! Bong! Her words are drowned out by a brass band, which has started to play on the street corner, and is in full flow just as the bus passes by. Is someone important visiting today? wonders Jonathan. Of course! That's why it's a big day, he thinks. I hope I won't arrive too late to see who it is. I fear I am running just a little bit behind. As the bus reaches its final stop, the passengers race past Jonathan, rushing ahead and disappearing from view behind some tall, leafy trees. One of the branches on the tree wobbles slightly, and as he looks up, Jonathan sees a little boy with blonde hair. He looks very familiar. Jonathan carries on walking, past a balloon sculptor, past a magician, and past a clown, wishing them all a polite good afternoon, until finally he arrives at the village green. It is a very big day. It's Jonathan's birthday! Today he is 187. What a lovely surprise, he laughs. But I'm so sorry to be late. Three children from one of Jonathan's storytelling classes are there and are very excited to see him. Amelia, Jack, and Rebecca love to help. When Jonathan is in school, they always make sure he finds his way around and arrives safely wherever he is going. Jonathan is delighted to see the children and greets them with a big smile. All three begin to talk at once. Rebecca steps forward and says, hey, Don't worry. We told you 2 p.m. so you'd make it for 3 p.m. I wrote it on the note. Amelia, 
who is standing behind Rebecca, pipes up. You're going to love what we've got planned. It's going to be the best birthday ever. Jack, who has been perched on a branch of a tree, looking out for Jonathan, climbs down and runs over. But first, we're going to play some party games, he tells everyone. The treasure hunt was a real mystery. I seem to have forgotten where I left the treasure. Oops, sighs Jonathan. Pin the tail on the tortoise gets a bit confusing. Jonathan hides completely inside his shell as an excited, blindfolded boy tried to stick a tail onto his shell. Which bit is the bottom? he asks his friend. His friend shrugs, dunno, in reply. Jonathan is the best at musical statues. He stands perfectly still while the children wobble around him like little jellies. Although, when it comes to pass the parcel, many of the children start to nod off as Jonathan is so slow at unwrapping the paper and it's his turn. Let's give Jonathan his gifts now, shouts Amelia as she leads him to a birthday cake which she has baked herself. It's his favorite carrot cake. And not only carrots, but kale and spinach and beetroot too. There are a lot of candles on the cake. Rebecca has painted a lovely picture of Jonathan. It is very flattering and looks like a young tortoise of a hundred. Jack proudly shows Jonathan what he's made. It's a large scaffold platform on wheels. Jonathan looks a bit confused, but responds politely. Um, that's terrific. Thank you, Jack. Jack laughs and replies quickly. It's to help you reach your candles, all 187 of them. Mrs. Goggins hears the word candles and chimes in. That's going to be a lot of smoke. My washing! And she runs off home to gather it in. Jonathan steadily climbs the scaffold, reaches the top. He stops for a moment and looks out at the smiling faces who are all cheering him on. Go, Jonathan! They chant. Taking a massive breath, he blows from the tips of his toes to the top of his nose. I will blow out every candle with one massive breath, he thinks. <laughs> oh dear, he needs some help. Luckily, Amelia, Jack and Rebecca are on hand, and after a quick, on three, from Jack, they blow until every one of the 187 candles are out. Amelia works quickly to cut the cake and makes sure that everyone has a big slice ready to enjoy during the main event. Jonathan is going to tell one of his stories. He's written a big tale for today, but, uh-oh, he can't find it. I'm so sorry. I've let you all down, he stammers. Poor Jonathan. He can't find his notebook, and he can't remember how the story goes. What will he do? Don't worry, smiles Amelia. We can help. Psst, mouths Rebecca into Jonathan's ear. It's a story called The Thoroughly Naughty Viking. I am Astrid Armwrestle, shouts Rebecca. And I'm Terrible the Horrible, yells Jack. I'm Freya Foul Fiend, roars Amelia. Jonathan has forgotten something else, too. Amelia, Jack, and Rebecca we're going to help him with the story. They know what to do, they've learned their lines, and they are all ready in their costumes. Launching themselves into battle, they act out all the parts. Frail Foul Fiend is going on a rampage, but not if Terrible the Horrible and Astrid Armwrestle have anything to do with it. They cook up a trap for the invader that involves a skipping rope, a bag of fizzy cola laces, and a hula hoop. The story is a big hit, Everybody loves it, and cheer the children as they take a bow at the end of the performance. Bravo! The crowd cries. It's been a busy day, and it's now time for children to go home. You have all made a very old tortoise so happy, Jonathan says, waving as they all leave to catch the bus. He turns to Amelia, Jack and Rebecca to thank them for all of their help and kindness, not just today, but all year round. This has been the biggest bonkers birthday. 
which has made it to the very best one of all, he says, beaming. One year later. Don't forget to be at the village green for 2 p.m. Remember what happened last year. The Happy Little Bear Goes to the Zoo by Amy Land, illustrated by Catherine Howe and read by Marion Elizabeth. Dedication. As always, I would like to dedicate my book to the two men in my life. My husband, Roy, for pushing me even when I wanted to give up, and to my son, Cameron. If it wasn't for him, I would have never thought of writing children's books. His love for reading got me to write. The happy little bear's mummy and daddy were taking him different places for the first week he was out of school. On Sunday, he went to the park. On Monday, he went to the beach. On Tuesday, he was going to the zoo. So, the happy little bear's mummy and daddy woke him up. But first, they had to eat breakfast, so they went to his favourite restaurant. When they got to the zoo, they had to pay to get in. They looked at their little map of the zoo to see where they wanted to go. They rode on a safari ride. On the ride, they saw a lion and some elephants. They also saw a zebra and a giraffe with her baby. Next, they saw a cage with monkeys in it. They went to the aquatic section and saw some sea otters and some big stingrays. They saw a group of penguins. He went to see the dolphins and he got to feed them and pet them. He also saw some giant turtles. There was a cage of parrots and they saw some flamingos. He saw some giant pandas and they went to the petting zoo. There was a play area where he rode a musical carousel that had different animals on it. Finally, he rode a little roller coaster. By the end of the day, he was ready to go home. He took home a stuffed dolphin from the gift shop. On the way home, he was so tired that he fell asleep. The end. I Am Purpose, written by Isaiah Ragsdale, voiced by Len Clark. Frustrated, overwhelmed and ashamed were all of the feelings inside of Purpose as he thought about his desire to become a tree. Purpose was a tiny little seed, but had big dreams of becoming a tree. So Purpose set out on his journey to become a tree. Along the way, Purpose met a breeze. Hi, my name is Purpose and I'm just a seed. The wind saw Purpose and introduced himself right away. Hi Purpose, I'm Mr. Wind. Nice to meet you. Mr. Wind took a closer look at Purpose and asked, why do you look so dismayed? Purpose let out a sigh and said, I'm a tiny seed. I want to grow big and strong. I want to be what I was born to become. Mr. Wind said, What is that? Purpose responded, A tree that can make clean air with branches that can give shade and a safe place for children and animals to play. That sounds great, but... <laughs> You're too little. You can run into a wind that's not as nice as me. It could blow you away, maybe even to lands unknown. This world is dangerous. Play it safe. Purpose was discouraged. He spent the day playing Mr. Wind's words in his mind. Purpose became sad when he thought about how easy others had it. He started believing that he would never become a tree. Purpose delayed his journey as he sat in the same spot as yesterday. 
his good friend Flower came along calling out his name. Hey old friend! For a moment, when Purpose saw Flower, he felt hopeful. He gazed at her pretty petals, her long step, and, most importantly, her confidence. Hey Flower, how are you? Purpose, why do you look so sad? Purpose told Flower the conversation he had had with Mr. Wind. Flower became concerned. I agree with Mr. Wind. I don't want anything to happen to you. Just be a flower like me and we can hang out all day and play. Flowers are pretty and everyone loves and admires us. You'll never be alone again, Flower said. The more Purpose thought about this idea, the better it sounded. Purpose questioned why becoming a tree was so important. Becoming a flower sounded so much better, and being a tree would be too hard, Purpose thought. As the days went by, his excitement started to fade. Flower noticed and asked what was wrong. Purpose felt bad and told Flower the truth. Flower, I just thought that I would be happy being a flower, but it's just not me. Flower felt sorry but didn't know what to do. She tried to convince him that being a flower was great, but Purpose said, it's just not me. I'm supposed to be a tree. I just don't know how to become a tree. Purpose remained unsure of what to do next. Purpose wanted to be free and tall, yet in his little state, he felt bored and unhappy. The more Purpose thought about it, the more he believed becoming a tree was just too hard. Purpose fell asleep dreaming about all the great things that trees do. As much as Purpose wanted to give up on becoming a tree, something on the inside of him just would not let him do it. Purpose was awakened by large raindrops. Hey, what's going on? Purpose asked. A voice responded. Sorry, Purpose. Just doing my job. I have to come or else you and Flower won't go. Purpose felt angry and betrayed. Flower didn't tell me I had to get wet. She said for me to sit here and be beautiful. No one told me about you. And how did you know my name? The voice responded. My name is Rain and I was sent to meet you grow. I understand how you feel. I too once felt like you until I met the sun. Everyone hated me, and sometimes I think they still do. The kids don't like me, the flowers, fruits and vegetables say that I hurt them with my big heavy drops, and even the insects don't come out of play when I'm around. I tried to hide and run away until I met the sun. One day, I met the sun, and he changed my life forever. He brightened my day and encouraged me to keep going. He reminded me that I am special and unique, we a specific job to do. I help things grow. I help produce life. I don't have a lot of friends, but I am strong and I'm confident in who I am. One day, you will be too. Purpose asked, How? Who is the sun? Where can I find him? Rain told Purpose, You'll see him tomorrow. When he shows up, tell him I sent you. He'll know what to do. Thank you, Rain. That night, Purpose went to bed thinking about what Rain had said. Is it really possible that my dreams may come true? Maybe Wind and Flower were wrong. Maybe, just maybe. Purpose tossed and turned all night. Purpose was jumping up and down with excitement. He thought more and more about becoming a tree. Morning couldn't come fast enough. Morning came. Purpose was up bright and early. He wondered what the sun would talk about. What questions should Purpose ask the sun? What advice would the sun give Purpose? As soon as Purpose saw the sun, he said, Mr. Sun, Mr. Sun, you're my last hope. Can you help me become a tree? The sun looked at Purpose lovingly and smiled. Purpose, you don't need me. You already have everything you need inside of you to become a tree. Only believe in you. Purpose felt overwhelmed and started to tell the sun what everyone else had said, but the sun wouldn't let him. No one can stop what's already happening. What's on the inside must come out. 
Purpose was stunned by Mr. Sun's response. Purpose stood there, taller and stronger than ever. Mr. Sun held a mirror showing his unique reflection. Purpose cried tears of joy because the image in the mirror was a growing tree. Suddenly, it all made sense. Mr. Wind, Flower, Rain and Sun helped Purpose to prevail. Wisdom and knowledge, friendship and challenges, growth and connection placed him right where he needed to be. Mr. Sun affirmed Purpose and called the tree into being. Purpose did not realize it, but he had evolved into a tree. At first, Purpose was willing to blend in with flower and avoid danger from the wind. After enduring the pain of rain, he stood as tall as a tree. In the days to come, squirrels and birds built their homes on Purpose's branches and kids played around the tree. Purpose became a tree and was finally fulfilled. Despite what everyone said, Purpose prevailed. Regardless of who believed, Purpose grew. When others doubted, Purpose became a tree. Purpose proudly shouted, I am Purpose! Thank you. You've been listening to Len Clark.